This is a series of pictures uh, that's published in the New York Times. If you go to the New York Times, I was looking today, and Google or, or search on uh, Gulf oil spill, they will show you a series of maps, day-by-day -day maps of where the spill took place, where the, where the surface slipped. Remember, maybe only 10% of the total. You cannot see below the surface. And you can see here they've got the loop current and what they call a loop current eddy. These enormous eddies, hundreds of miles across, have a profound effect not only on the dispersal of this oil plume, but also on the, on the weather and climate. It was one of these uh, giant loop current eddies that kicked Hurricane Ka Katrina up from a Category 3 to a Category 5 before it slammed into New Orleans. So these huge blobs of warm tropical water are the heat engine for hurricanes. Next slide. This is a satellite picture, a visible picture of the surface slick. And you can see it's not just a blob. It has very distended features. It looks like it's been carried around. And it's, what is happening there is getting caught up in this north end of this loop current that loops around like that. Next slide. Here's a, an artist's conception of what this loop current might be. Here's the, the flow coming in through the Yucatan Strait looping around and forming a gigantic eddy and then out through the Florida Straits up the east coast. And you see the oil spill was right on the top edge of this loop current. Next slide. This is a satellite picture. This is uh, taken, I can't read it, but it was early May, May the 2nd. Here's the loop current and it's got little eddies of its own. So this giant eddy has little what we call filamentary eddies and it's right in the area of the slit. So it's picking up pieces of the slick and carrying it to goodness knows where. Next slide. That's a little movie made by a uh, colleague, uh, David Dietrich, myself. This shows the, this is a, a computer model. This shows the water flowing through the Caribbean Sea. Here's the loop current, we're zooming in now. It goes up the east coast of the Gulf Stream. And we see a gigantic loop current eddy forming. Understand this is about, uh, 250 miles across. This is the, one of the great eddies of the world. And look how that's swirling around, broken off completely. The loop current is now reformed and flowing out of the Florida Strait. But this giant eddy travels westward under the effect of the Earth's rotation until it hits the western side of the Gulf. What you've just seen took nine months. And so how much of the, how much of this is the Gulf Stream, but how much of the that caught up in that gigantic eddy and propagated to the west. We need to find out these things. This is what physical oceanography is all about. And then we worked with the biologists and the chemists and the geologists to understand what was the fate and the damage done by the slip. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, yeah, Jeff introduced me. I'm Jim Ammerman. I'm director of New York Sea Grant. Literally, I've been here two years to today. Um, but in a prior life, I was, as he said, at Texas A&M uh, for 12 years, in which time I did some research in the Gulf. Even after that, when I was at Rutgers, I was active in Gulf research. So er, in the early 90s, for several years, and again in the early 2000s, I've been at sea in the Gulf probably 20 times, mostly off the coast of Louisiana, in the uh, zone with all the oil platforms. So I thought what I'd do for you tonight is give you a little background of the oil industry, the fisheries, the microbiology, and then the, the environmental issues of the Gulf. And that sounds like a 50-minute lecture, but I promise I'll make it shorter. Um, I think a lot of you are probably not aware of the extent of the oil and gas industry offshore from Louisiana and Texas. There's something on the order of 3,500 platforms. Um, if you look at a map, it's like solid dots, particularly off Louisiana. What blew up on the Deepwater Horizon was a drilling platform. At any one time, there are up to 100 of those. They drill a well and then move on. What's out there all the time is production platforms. So they're close to 4,000 of them out there. So if, you, if you're out there at sea in certain parts of the Gulf at night, 
you think you're in midtown Manhattan because it's so lit up. Um, the oil and gas industry is worth between 20 and 30 billion dollars a year to Louisiana and Texas. And it employs something like one in every 13 people in the state of Louisiana. So this is a huge industry down there. It's not going away anytime soon. As long as we keep driving our cars, we're going to be getting oil from there. It's about a quarter of the quarter of the U.S. produced oil, and there's also a lot of natural gas. Um, the fisheries are also very important down there. About a billion dollars a year. About up to half of the U.S. total landings outside of Alaska and Hawaii, of the lower 48. And obviously, Jeff mentioned the oysters, the shrimp fishery is huge, um, and there are a number of other important fisheries. To give you an example of the importance of these two industries, every year, this, the town of Morgan City in Louisiana has an annual shrimp and petroleum festival. This year was the 75th one of these. So these have both been important for a long time. Um, I'm a microbiologist by training, so I want to talk a little about microbes in oil. And um, first of all, there are natural oil seeps all over the Gulf. You can see them by satellite there. So a lot of the organisms are used to some oil. I've seen estimates of up to 1,000 barrels a day by natural seepage. Um, that's the original estimate of what the oil leak was from the well. I don't know if it's that high, but you should be aware that there's oil seepage is a natural phenomenon. We've accelerated it, obviously, with the oil spill and other drilling activities. But that's why the, um, there's always tar balls on the beaches of Texas, and that's from these natural seeps. So the microbes in the Gulf, obviously, they're somewhat used to oil. Ultimately, they're good at getting rid of it, but they're not fast. And if someone tells you they can add miracle microbes, they'll eat the oil up quicker, it's not going to happen. Probably the only thing you could do would be to enrich it with fertilizer like nitrogen and phosphorus. And oil is such a good carbon source. So ultimately, the microbes will take care of it. The Gulf is also a very warm environment, which is a big advantage over Alaska. Surface temperatures in the Gulf in the summertime can reach almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So the metabolism is pretty fast. But, uh, but obviously, the amount of oil that was spilled was extraordinary. So it's not something that, we, that the biota there was used to. Mm -hmm.